The following video will disappoint you if you wish to have a superpower be extra special. Because if everyone's special, no one is. Yes, I like the movie The Incredibles 2. Anyway, and The Incredibles 1. But also, you don't want these characteristics that would make you unique special snowflakes in the world. Okay? Because they would, in most cases, lead to you having genetic conditions that could be passed to your children and kill them. Or make you susceptible to really stupid, stupid things that make you miserable. But you can do a test online, mostly harmless, that might convince you of these things. And you can do real-world tests that would really check for it that are dangerous as hell. Please don't do them. I'll describe them only to explain why you shouldn't do them. Colors along the spectrum. The colors that are in the spectrum as individual optical frequencies or wavelengths of light, primarily caused by individual molecules in reality that are affected by energy hitting them and them releasing color in a particular frequency. You notice how fluorescent uh, paint will react to ultraviolet, which has a really short frequency, but it'll put out all sorts of colors. That material doing that is what causes the same thing we see as pigments and or light sources. In the case of pigments, they absorb some colors and reflect others. And sometimes they can be incredibly specific. A virtual color is a color that does not appear as a color single frequency along the entire spectrum. Human eyes can detect a ridiculously wide range of them with very subtle variations in them simply because we have three primary light detectors for color frequency and one fourth detector for brightness, but it also has a color spectrum it reacts to, but we do not perceive it normally as a color. Yes, this complicates things. <coughs> So here we go. Just like a piano can hit individual notes, but you can hit a chord, some colors are virtual colors, and there's a shit ton of combinations of them. And some of these colors are detected as being special cases visually, like the color purple, pink, and a couple of others, because they became important to our species and others to be able to see, because detecting them would get our attention. So that combination is treated like it's a color when it's really a virtual one. Same thing as a chord or the sound of a specific noise, a bobcat screaming, is a very specific sound. It's not a note on the spectrum, it's a damn bobcat. Now let's move on. Except for virtual colors, visual equivalent to hitting a chord on a piano, that don't actually occur on that spectrum, the scales on your piano, you get combinations like that for pink and purple from red and blue. Depending on the definition, we cannot make or see any new real color, but we can have colorants, pigments, or paints that produce colors that are either A, along the spectrum very precisely, or B, certain combinations that are useful. <clears throat> Most of this comes from imitating the world around us. Many people can look up the history of color and find out that people didn't really treat colors as being named what we call them. It's not that we didn't perceive them, it's that we didn't bother giving them names. But there's a reason for this that we now understand is caused by genetics. But let's say our new colorant or pigment. Printers and paint can make a limited part of the spectrum that a video camera or a chemical photo can detect, or as I mentioned, you can make a color that they don't actually differentiate. But usually, but not always, a printer, a conventional printer you and I buy, or a paint we buy from the store, will have a very limited color range compared to what a camera can pick up. Most cameras are limited in dynamic range, how bright and dark they're allowed to detect and actually record, by a ratio of 128 to 1, 100 to 1, 200 to 1, or 256 to 1. Analog cameras were limited in most cases to a black versus white level change dynamically of 200 to 1 or so. Computers and electronics and high quality cameras we have in our cameras, high, not high, or max quality, not pro, can do 256 color. The mathematics for it are limited that way. That means you can have 8 bit, 8 bit, 8 bit for red, green, blue, and that's it. Now, there's a fourth color in almost all printing systems, so that actually makes it whiter, a lot like we have a fourth detector for brightness. That one's actually for yellow or other. 
that means that we really end up with 16 million colors that we can actually display on a screen mostly accurately. It's actually more limited than that, but that's about right. <clears throat> this is based on being oversensitive visually and having to compensate for red, green, or blue. It's green and yellow, by the way. And now we get to the next part. Humans can detect more than those photos or your screen, more than the screen you're using right now by a long shot, more than any printer's gonna spin out, but not a print shop. A print shop can produce a color spectrum that's bigger than your computer monitor or your camera could work with, unless it's a film camera. But then again, it has to have three types of film in it or more. So next we go on to the next part. Humans can detect a limited part of the visual spectrum out of all animals. There are some animals that can detect into the infrared or ultraviolet. Some of them have more light detector groupings, just like being able to hear all the notes on the piano versus just a few. Some are, we're tone deaf visually compared to some animals. Bats, dogs, seriously dogs I envy sometimes. Just like the ability to sense smell, human beings can smell or taste a group of maybe, I think it's like half a dozen flavors or tastes or chemical markers for what we call flavor or smell, dogs can detect more. That's just it. Just like we have the ability to hear a very large audio spectrum, thousands of different individual notes, much bigger than a piano, but some animals have wider ranges. But out of all life on the planet, shrimp, uh, bugs, some bacteria can detect light frequencies we can't even, we don't even know are there until we found it using equipment. And this is also a limited part of the electromagnetic spectrum that includes radio signals, x-rays, literally x-rays. The, these are electromagnetic signatures that can be sent over very long distances. Being blocked by an object, we could call everything that's blocked light. Okay, so we do get a, a range that's a bit bigger than the visual spectrum, but you get the idea. In 2009 or so, someone came up with a new kind of blue that was a better quality and better you know, it looks pretty, but it is not a color that's impossible to visualize. It's not a new color, it's a new pigment. So when people said color, they were being incorrect or at worst, sensationalistic. Most humans have a vision trait code set that's put on chromosomes exclusively. While you're developing in the womb, genetics can be screwed up, all sorts of changes can happen, chemical changes, and it can cause you to have different vision. But primarily, the red, green, blue uh, visual capability is carried on the X chromosome. Women have two, men have one, which means men can have those chromosomes on the X chromosome affect red, green, or blue, and uh, any other DNA. And women can have two sets of red, green, blue, whatever, or in this case, it's actually uh, red, green, altered, and have these combinations express separate light detectors for women. 6% <clears throat> of men carry anomalous gene codes for on that one chromosome that can cause different versions of red and green uh, center point or peak. The green color can be over here where it's yellow or another color. The red could be over more or towards the orange or something, right? Yeah, here we go. This can also cause 2% of men to be missing red or green or both. Total loss of visual color ability almost happens. They, they have a blue detector and a light detector for dark to light. That's it. They have two detectors, but only one color differentiator, which means they're at best able to see kind of two colors, but really just see gray shades of gray. They might see a broader range of shades of gray, but they're not able to see color. And when you lose an ability, it doesn't necessarily give you another ability in return. That's not really how it really works. Some people who go deaf don't have better vision. Some people who lose their vision don't get better hearing. And so it's not really like that. Now, on women, half of the women have the two X chromosomes with the, the red and green shift on one, and the other is quasi-normal. They can be shifted up and down the spectrum each, but they can end up with blue, red, other red, green, other green, Five possible combinations. Usually it's called, uh, the name of this condition is based on having four or more color detectors. And please understand, again, the light detection for just grayscale that's supposed to be useful at night can also have a color sensitivity. Usually it doesn't. That's also coded as well. 
Anyway, half the women on the planet have that kind of trait. However, only 2% of them can actually see any additional colors as tetrachromacy. Tetra meaning four, but it could be penta. It could be five or even six, bringing that up. A tiny number of people, and this is not on the Wikipedia article, have the, the light and dark uh, cones, not cone, uh, rods, also detect color for some blasted reason. They're just hypersensitive to one color range or another. Or they can, or they're not filtered, which is bad, and they can detect ultraviolet and infrared, which means you can have five optical regions and then red, infrared, and ultraviolet. That's how many light sensor ranges we could potentially have. If you can detect infrared and ultraviolet, it means that your corneas are not doing what they're supposed to do of filtering it out, which makes you have a higher likelihood of going blind from cancers, retinal damage. It gets all over the place. <clears throat> I can differentiate 39 colors out of a possible 39 in the thumbnail I'm going to use for this video and for a test that you saw on the internet years back. The reason for that is, is that your monitor isn't able to do the full color range. It isn't. Unless you have a very specific type of monitor that has 10 bit per color, it isn't able to differentiate either for the same reason that most people can't differentiate the colors. It's not that your vision is better or worse. It's that your monitor is much worse than any eye on the planet. You'd have to go to an eye doctor to get the color printout. And the color printout is made by literally pointing a scanner at the card and detecting the optical frequency itself for each band. Yes, that's right. That card is really expensive because it's not made by mixing red, green, and blue because that wouldn't do anything. It's made out of individual stripes of paint or ink that have a very specific frequency peak. Literally custom made 40 colors that are literally just one wavelength. If you don't know how pain in the ass that is, the sheet of paper or card that is handed out, if you can find anybody that has it, technically has two or three colorants on it that are poisonous, like one microgram will kill you poisonous. So again, let's talk about other tests. To be able to detect ultraviolet and infrared, let's just do that really quickly, would mean you'd have to expose yourself to a bright flash of several thousand times brighter than the sun, or just as bright as the sun maximum, directly into the eye to see if you can detect infrared and ultraviolet. I found out the bad way that I can detect those. Also had a test done by a doctor under controlled conditions to see why I could see that flash. And I can technically detect it like the majority of you, but that's just because it's so blasted bright that it gets past the filter in the eye. My filtering and my cornea isn't good enough, which means it's a defect, not an advantage. But half of the people on the planet, because most of them are women, have the ability to see this color range. Can men do it? Yes, because they can have the genetics for the X chromosome duplicate wrong during division when they're growing in the womb, and they can end up with the same thing. It's insanely unusual, 1 in 50,000 or something crazy like that. But half the people on the planet, mostly most of them are women, can see these extra colors. This whole thing went very, very, the blue gold dress thing. After that came out, the side test came out. But again, it's limited by your monitor. Now, here's the fun part. Can you get a color-safe version that isn't made out of poisonous something, something stripes? Yes, you can order one. It's expensive or not, depending on where you get it from. And this is made by a real simple trick. They just put the different sensitivities together in an emulsion and make a giant photograph. I think it's 20 bucks or 50 bucks, depending on where you get it from. The one that's printed with non-toxic compounds, now that we have better ones, a long time ago it was much more toxic, it was behind glass, um, they're available as well. Is this worthwhile? No. There is an online test to see if you have average or above average visual capability, or if you're missing red, green, blue, or if your brain isn't differentiating. By the way, you can have these cones or whatever in your eyes and not be able to see the difference because the nerve endings don't discriminate them correctly. So again, it's very rare. Half a percent of the population have it. Almost all of them are women. And the others that are male usually come with a bunch of genetic baggage that you wouldn't want. And that's it. But hey, it was a fun video and a fun story and it was fun to look up. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. And uh, 